Hey everyone, welcome back to another VCT predictions video. Today, I'm going to be doing my predictions for the final week of the regular season for both EMEA and Americas. Not Pacific this week, just because I already did the uh, the Super Week pickums uh, last week. So go check that video out if you're curious about the rest of the season. Uh, I might do a little recap at the end if I have time, but I have a I have a concert to go to tonight for my little sister at seven, so I might not get to that, but we'll see. Uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe, and go follow me on Twitter and Twitch. I've been streaming a little bit more as of late, and I'll probably be streaming a lot more as it goes into the summer, as I'm graduating relatively soon. And yeah, let's get right into it. So we'll start here with the EMEA, where we have the match of the week, first week or first match, uh, Fnatic versus Navi. I'm gonna take Fnatic. I know Navi have probably been saving stuff and are gonna try to. I don't know if they're auto qualified for top two here. If they are, they're not. Neither team is gonna try. I could see uh, both teams agreeing to play a stupid comp, but I mean, obviously Fnatic's gonna try because they're Fnatic and they're gonna want to keep their undefeated streak in EMEA. I think they haven't lost a game in EMEA group stage, or no, they haven't lost a game in EMEA since uh, since stage one of last year, and I don't know if they lost one in the group stage at all last year. So that's kind of crazy, but Team Heretics, Vitality. This is a must-win must game for Vitality. Heretics are eliminated. Uh, I'm going to take Vitality. Uh, and then Carmen Court, Giants. I mean, Giants are just a better team. They had a bad week against Heretics a couple weeks ago. Bounce back against Vitality. I think they'll be fine this week against Carmen Court. Koi, Liquid. Liquid, uh... Koi and Heretics played one of the Valorum games of all time last week. Uh, that went until like really late in the MEA, and I feel bad for the casters, but uh, yeah. That was not a good game, and it was not well run at all. And then Foot, BBL. I think it's between Vitality and Foot for the last spot, right? Or is it, No, it's Vitality and BBL. Okay. So Foot doesn't really need to try too much in this game. But they're going to because it is a battle of the two Turkish teams. But I still think BBL is going to be able to take this one. As I talked about in my most overrated and underrated video, and as I'll talk about in a little bit, I have BBL a lot higher than what a lot of people are ranking them at. And then, as I said before, my dog started barking, and then he interrupted the last attempt to record this. The EMEA power rankings. So we have Heretics moving down to 10. They lost to Koi last week. Not too much other than that. I mean, Koi beat them, so they're going to be ranked above them this week. That's not always how it'll work with these, as you've seen. But in this case, I mean, they were rated right next to each other, I think. Koi should be above Heretics. And then Carmen Corp in that same tier, same thing. I mean, they're just not good right now. Uh, and then a tier gap up to Vitality, Foot, and BBL. I have BBL, as I said, rated at the top of this tier, the fifth best team. Uh, in EMEA, I just think they're world class on ascent. Not too much the other maps, but having a free map win is kind of really good for a team, especially if they want to be an upset team to make it to Tokyo. Maybe they have a shot, but uh, I mean, Foot and Vitality are. I, don't know, I just think they're not as good. I think Vitality is probably going to end up missing playoffs, I think, because BBL has the tiebreaker over them. But yeah, they're both 3-5, and five, and as long as Vitality doesn't have a significantly better round diff. Or no. Yeah, even, even if they do have a significantly better round diff, BBL won the game over Vitality, so that shouldn't matter. Uh, and then Foot, I just think, has been a little bit overrated throughout the season, but is still a very solid team. I think Vitality and Up, are all pretty solid teams, but they're nothing special. Until you get to teams like Giants, where they're probably the favorite to make it to that fourth spot in Tokyo. But I still don't think they're as good as the teams above them, like Liquid, who, once they woke up on Bind, looked like maybe... Uh, I wouldn't say the best team in the world. I think a like top three to... Yeah, like three team in the world on Bind at this point. I think NRG is number one still. And then you could maybe sprinkle Fnatic in there if you want to have them at two. And then I would have Liquid at three, probably. I haven't watched a ton of Bind. Uh, 
from Pacific, or I don't remember a ton from Bind on Pacific. I'd have to like actually think about it to actually rank teams on Bind. But regardless, Liquid played very well last week, even though they did drop a map to BBL. And then Navi, still the second best team in EMEA. I'm not going to move them. And then Fnatic, tier their own at the top, still undefeated. I think they're going to go undefeated. And even if they lose to Navi, I would still have them ranked higher than that. And then the Americas Pickums, which I forgot to hit submit on last week, which is kind of upsetting. Um, but I'm recording this before the Leviathan Cloud9 game. Uh, I did predict Cloud9 in that game, and I think Cloud9 should win that game, regardless of how well Leviathan plays. But I am going to wait for the power rankings, or to record the power rankings until after then. So... I don't know why that matters for you guys, but I'm just saying I have not watched the Leviathan Cloud9 game yet in case uh, that ends up mattering. Uh, it shouldn't here. Uh, I still think no matter what happens in that game, both results are going to happen. So we'll start with Sentinels, Furia. Furia losing to 100 Thieves last week uh, in a decently sized upset. I don't think it was a massive upset or anything, uh, but going up against Sentinels, who with Marv IGLing, which was kind of surprising, uh, beat Crew last week. And I don't think Sentinels do it again. I think they're going to miss playoffs. Uh, sadly, depending on if you're a Sentinels fan, I actually would like them to miss playoffs just because the way they built this roster was so bad. I thought it was bad at the beginning and just proved me right. And then NRG, EG... Uh, NRG beating Loud last week in pretty convincing fashion, was, which was kind of surprising. I thought they would win, but I thought it'd be your normal, like, El Clasico, just insane game between those two, but it wasn't. Versus EG, who stomped MIBR, uh, but I'm going to take NRG. I think the form that they're in right now, they look like the best team in the league. Spoilers, they're not top team in my power ranking. Uh... But yeah, their form right now, they look like the best team right now. And then Cloud9 Crew, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do if Crew win this game, but they looked awful against Sentinels last week. And I mean, that's the main reason why Sentinels won. Uh, and Cloud9 have been looking good, and I fully expect them to beat Leviathan. And then Loud, Leviathan, uh, Loud should win. I know they lost the energy last week. I don't care. Uh... <laughs> Should be, should be a free game for them. I mean, not free, but it should be easy enough for them. They can counter strat Leviathan, uh, and they'll just still do the same things. And then MIBR, Hundred Thieves. I think at this point, Hundred Thieves should be auto qualified for playoffs as long as Cloud Nine beats Leviathan and Loud does. But I'm still gonna pred them because MIBR suck. I don't think that's a hot take. And yeah. Now onto the power rankings, which I'm going to be recording a couple hours from now, and you'll see in about a second. Now that Cloud9 is up 8-2 on Haven, uh, or in a 3v3 right now. Don't know if they'll win this, but regardless, they're going to win this map. Uh, so I think it's pretty safe to say that I can start the power rankings now, assuming that Leviathan loses this pretty convincingly. So we'll start with Crew at 10, and... I know a lot of people are really down on MIBR right now, and so am I, but Sentinels looked bad last week, and Crew also looked bad, and Crew looked a lot worse, especially like on the beginning of Lotus. It looked like they were just going to bomb out of that game and not have a chance for the rest of it, so that was very disappointing. I know MIBR also suck and got blown out by EG, but I think EG is a better team than Sentinels, so... I decided to swap those teams. Not a huge deal, though. And then I still have Sentinels in the same tier because Crew almost beat them. Like, it was a fairly close game, especially on Lotus. Uh, and then this next tier, I know some people are not going to be happy about the rankings, but I have Leviathan at 7, Fury at 6, EG at 5, and 100 Thieves at 4. If you, like, ordered this in any order, I wouldn't be mad. These teams are just so close right now. Um, but I think 100 Thieves last week showed the best peak. They did play really good against Loud. I mean, not really good. They played well against Loud on Split, specifically. Ascent, they got. They would just look lost. Um, 
So I don't I don't feel too great about this, but Leviathan losing really bad to Cloud9 right now. Furia lost to 100 Thieves last week. I do think 100 Thieves is playing be better Valorant than Furia. Furia are on a kind of a kind of a slide. And it will be hard for them to not make playoffs, but and I highly doubt they won't. But uh it's just Furia were so overhyped again. As I mentioned earlier with uh Gen G, go check out my most overrated and most underrated teams video. Uh, that I put up, like, I think it was Sunday? I don't remember. Uh, but regardless, uh, I just, I think Fury are the most overrated team in America's right now. Uh, so I have them at six. Ahead of Leviathan, who are getting rolled by a better team right now, to be fair. But both the teams lost 100 Thieves. I just think Fury is a tiny bit better right now. And then EG, they did roll MBR. I could see both these teams swapping next week, Hunter Thieves and EG, but I I just, for some reason, I cannot put EG at four because I I just can't. Like, I they're not making Tokyo. I feel very confident about that. If I could legally bet in my state, I would bet. And there wasn't, like, a crypto betting site. I don't know. Like, if I could legally bet on something, I would bet on EG not making playoffs and put a lot of money on it because they're not, they're not making playoffs making uh tokyo uh, just because there's this narrative that people think they have a chance uh, they have to get by one of nrg c9 and loud to do that so i just don't see it happening and then under thieves kind of upset fury last week i'd say i think it was a unexpected for a lot of people but for me uh it wasn't crazy at all and it felt like they were in control. I'll show the map here. All the way through Haven. Or not through Haven. They felt pretty comfortably in control through Haven. Uh, and on Fracture, they kind of rolled. Pearl, they played them pretty close. But it was Hunter Thieves Permaban. And they kind of brought it out new, newly. So I don't hate it. Uh, I just think if Pearl's going to be a permanent part of this team's map pool, I think they have a better shot and making Tohio than some of these other teams below them. You know what? I'll do the little Pacific recap because I have time right now before I have to leave. Uh, and I'm, I'll just record this before the America's Power Ranking stuff because I don't need to watch those games to know what happened in these. Uh, but where did this week start? Paper Rex, Gen G. Paper Rex completely embarrassed Gen G. Not too much to talk about here. Uh, I saw the score of this game, watched the highlights. And that was it. I mean, Gen G played like poop, uh, as they have been, and as I predicted them to. Uh, they didn't win a game in the Super Week, and hate to say that I was right. Uh, I had them a little bit lower coming into the split, and I had them lower until they beat Team Secret, which, I mean wasn't super impressive and then i thought it was crazy that teams that people thought they would beat drx they didn't uh, i mean you can watch my most overrated and most underrated video if you want to hear me talk about how genji are overrated a little bit more but that being said onto the zeta t1 game this was a giga banger uh 13 11 that was not what i meant to click on 13 10 and obviously bind wasn't that good but i thought it was still entertaining uh zeta just didn't look prepared to play this map if I'm being honest, uh, I think Depp probably should have played Raze here. Would have helped their attack side a little bit more, like get into Hookah and stuff. Uh, but T1 brought out the uh, the Gecko on this map, which didn't look too bad. And Fracture, uh, Ban went crazy. I think Zeta probably should have won this map. But whatever. I mean, if the, I think if they win a pistol, they win the map. And then Lotus, uh, Zeta had a nice comeback. Uh, I don't get what... I, ain't get, I mean, I don't get why they're playing Harbor on this map. Just play fucking Omen. I thought they played something else. I thought they played the No Viper, like teams have been playing. Also, I don't know why they put Ban on Viper, if they're going to run the six-man roster. Uh, and then Team Secret beats DRX here, which I watched on stream. And DRX was doing some hyper trolling. I just think they stopped caring uh, at this point. Uh, they played Zest in this game instead of Foxy9. People were saying it's because they don't show they didn't want to show strats. Just play Foxy9 and don't use your strats. Like, 
It's not that difficult, if I'm being honest, but whatever. Uh, and then Global Detonation. Uh, I didn't watch this game yet, and I don't think I'm going to. Uh, I just know SK Rossi did good. And that's about it. Monye was crazy on the Astro again, apparently. I don't know. I don't have too much to say about it, even if I did watch it. Uh, Talon RRQ. I also have not watched this one yet, but this just, I mean, why? This just looks like them going back to the trolls. And like, I mean, they played their normal, no, that this is not their normal roster. Why did they play Garnet this week? Have they been doing that? This is like an actual live reaction. I saw their Harbor comp on, yeah, they hadn't been playing him. Like, if you're not going to play him, just fucking don't play him. Like, or if you're going to play him now, play him the whole season. I know he went crazy at lock and It seems like he didn't do terrible here, but I don't know. It just doesn't make sense to me. Just play Jit Boys on the raise. Or, Jit Boys was playing the fucking raise at lock in, right? Yeah. I don't know. This is just live reaction getting upset. Or obviously, RRQ running, running the weird roster, but. Ascent was bad, and then Haven, I mean, they ran their normal stuff on Haven and still got rolled, but I, I think if they didn't run the Harbor and just ran the Omen instead, they probably would have had a better chance to win this game, so kind of upsetting for me because I really wanted Talon to make playoffs, because I thought they would, but they did not. And then Zeta beat Genji. Uh, just Genji continuing to be overrated. Running the six, is this six? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, the six man roster. I don't understand why teams do this. It honestly upsets me. And then the team secret global game. Oh, I skipped over T1 DRX, but you probably can do that too. Just not all that competitive. Uh, but DRX kind of was in control the whole game. Uh, and then team secret global was a very, very fun game. Global brought out the harbor on Haven, as you can see here. Obviously, didn't work out too well for them, but Jeremy was going crazy on the raise. Uh, and then Lotus. This was a really fun map. Uh, like, I think it was, yeah, it was Global's last round, round 22. They ran a, they won a 2v4 to keep their season alive, which was so fun. I mean, Texture popped off in this game. Uh, that's just not the right tab. Uh, played really, really well. And, yeah, they just couldn't hold on, close out the game. Global are out, Team Secret are in. Uh, and yeah, that's going to be it for the video. Uh, if you guys enjoyed, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Uh, actually, one more thing. DRX were in danger of, uh, of missing out on top two if they didn't win that game, which I thought was kind of crazy. But if Paper X won their final game, actually, I'll talk about the final two games as well, where I had Talon and Paper X winning, I think that's still the uh, the on paper favorites uh i think do rrq need to win to get in just ignore me starting the outro there uh rrq did they beat genji no they didn't i think they're out then yeah i think your six teams are in because oh no no, no. they they'd be five and four if they win so yeah if rrq win they're in if they lose they're out against paper rex Paper X, did they beat T1? They did beat T1, so they are in top two. Okay, so everything is set except this last playoff spot. I'm low key hoping RRQ win this because I'm a Gen G hater. I just think they're overrated. Other than that, I don't mind any of the players. Uh, but yeah, if you guys enjoyed, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Uh, really helps me out. Go follow me on Twitter, Twitch, all that kind of stuff. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.